<laughs> Welcome to the show. And I hope to keep it a show. I really do. I hope to, you know, entertain you as well as inform you. And my real goal here is to, to re-establish wonder in the world. Uh, I think that what has happened with us is we've become very rigid in our belief systems. We've been very locked in our logical, rational, reasonable minds. And we're not thinking outside of the box. And as long as we stay in the box, we're going to just keep traveling down the path of destruction that we're on. Uh, some of this talk is going to be amazing, interesting, and weird. Uh, and when you start to realize that, say, with Nostradamus's predictions, and you start to realize, well, Saddam Hussein was the Antichrist, or George W. Bush was the Antichrist, why is it that we're all continually waiting for the end of the world? This has been something that I've been trying to understand, and trying to get a, help, a grip of the agenda that's going on that's propelling this type of mindset forward. Because all my travels and everywhere I go, all I run across are good human beings that love one another, want to take care of the planet, want to grow a garden, enjoy one another, create things, and just have a good time. I don't meet humans that want to subjugate me, stick me in a jail cell, put me in any, unless they're wearing a uniform and part of this authoritative agenda. And so it's always my question, well, if we've got six billion good people and about 30 bad you know, why is it that we're all following them? And I found that what has happened is our, our true divine nature has been usurped by magicians. I call them sorcery, sorcerers because it's a more proper term for the black magic being used. When you start to tell people about the occult nature of the government, the nature of magic that they're dealing with, uh, then all of a sudden magic gets thrown into this area of evil, and then, you know, everybody's turned to the Bible, and I don't want to do that either. I don't want to say one's good, one's bad. What I'm saying is that these guys are using a, a tool, a device, a method of science that we don't yet understand, but they do. And they want to turn it around and use it for their own forces. And so as an example, instead of you supplying your own divine uh, future, you now seek a dollar bill. And the dollar bill is a magical pantacle. If you look at any seal of Solomon, any ancient book grimoire of magic, you're going to see two seals with, combined with a, a binding agent. And so on the dollar bill, you've, of course, got the eye in the pyramid with the, the phoenix, and it's 13s, and then the one in the middle. And this is the reason the dollar bill has never changed, as they changed all the other bills along the way. They never once changed the dollar. And that's because it's their main pantacle, their main talisman. It has all their magical sigils on it. It's their symbol of power. And so this very power then has usurped our divine nature. So instead of seeking a miracle in your life, you, you believe the miracle comes from the money. And then this gives you the belief that you now control your future because you can pay to have what you want. You can say, I'm going to do this in the future because I have this pantacle, I have this talisman, I can do what I want. And that really is a Luciferian belief system. And it's a false system because it doesn't exist. It's all controlled by these guys, the, the magicians, the money masters, those that have crafted money out of nothing. And this entire fiat currency comes straight from the Templars, and that's where uh, we started to get into the gold for paper idea. So this magical pantacle now has just usurped your very divine nature, and instead of having a miracle come into your life, and you go, oh my god, I can't believe this was just as wonderful as it is, and I'm getting everything I need, and I didn't have to do anything for it but me. me. Uh, now you have to go and get a job at, under the golden arches, or under the sun sign, or under the pentagram, or whatever sigil they want to put on their magical uh, logo. And you have to work for this magical symbol, which is a talisman. And so once we start to realize who's in charge of our planet, that's the big thing that people miss. We think that the civilization is the outcome of human endeavor, that this is just the way life would have turned out had we been left our own devices. But I've always had this question. Why are we mining gold? What is gold? And why is it so important to planet Earth? Why is it that God says, go kill them and take their gold? I don't understand this. What do we need this rock for? And once you start to understand that our ancient past is actually far more technologically advanced than we have been told, then you start to understand why gold is important. Because it's important today for technology. And once you start to understand levels of gold and monoatomic gold and hyperdimensionalities, then you realize, oh, gold is like the spice of doom. Gold has the ability to fold space-time, and we can travel from star to star with gold. And that's when you start to get into interesting, curious questions. And that's what I'm hoping to show you some of today.
and leave you astounded. <laughs> At 10 years old, I drew a picture. And I had no idea what I was drawing when I was 10. This was uh, 1976, uh, right before Star Wars came out. Or else these would have been X-Wing fighters. I, I saw Star Wars 14 times in the theater. <laughs> I always wanted to be a spaceman, all right, so just keep that in mind. <laughs> but I drew this picture at 10, and I, I knew nothing, and I don't know why I still have it. I have lost everything I own throughout my entire life, uh, but I have this picture. I don't know why. <laughs> and as I, uh, I, I drew all of these space shuttles on here, and I actually won the, the school uh, art contest that I, this was for. And uh, as I drew each of these space shuttles, I felt they needed a, a symbol. They needed a symbol of some sort, and I didn't know what I wanted. I wanted something cool, though. I'd already drawn flames and everything else down the space shuttle. I wanted to put something cool on there. And my hand came up with this. Just a little curved line with a straight line running through it. And I thought, well, all right, you know, that's not as cool as I was hoping. But I went ahead and I put it on each of the space shuttles. All right, now our space shuttle titles are the Columbia Endeavor for the discovery of Atlantis. All right, challengers were destroyed. Enterprise was an added addition, but Columbia Endeavor for the Discovery of Atlantis is our space shuttle missions. If you recognize who NASA is and recognize that they come from a Freemasonic line that goes back to the Nazis. It was the Nazi scientists that came over and <coughs> gave us rockets. And then you couple that with Jet Propulsion's laboratories, and you've got the occult, because JPL is started by Jack Parsons, who was a member of the Ordo Templi Orientis, uh, connected with Aleister Crowley, and all of this comes back to the occult. And our space program is run by the occult. Then I drew this winged serpent. I had no idea, you know, and I'm still, I'm still asking about this one, but I've got some answers now. And this is what I thought was a spiral galaxy. That's what I thought it was. Okay, so 18 years later, I'm moving on 30, and this starts to come to life. All of a sudden, this artwork starts to make sense. I come across a little book known as The Serious Mystery. And this book was written by uh, Robert Temple. And after he wrote this, the Temple of the 33rd, the Supreme Mother Council of the World of the Freemasons, started ha pestering him to join because he had secrets in here about the Masonic religion that they themselves had never heard. And I'm like, get this guy in here. Well, this book's all about a bunch of fish people that came down and talked to an African tribe from a star known as Sirius. And the fish people that came, they gave the Dogon a symbol. So they go and they interview the Dogon, these uh, men in Africa, in Mali, Africa. And they, uh, they tell them the story of a, a race of beings that came from a star known as Sirius. It's a binary star system that we only discovered in the 70s. Or we've only got a picture of in the 70s. We discovered it beforehand, but we couldn't see it. But yet these Dogon knew everything about Sirius. They knew the orbit of its uh, binary star was 50 years. They knew all these astronomical data about uh, the this, this star that we couldn't see. And they don't have telescopes. And so they were like, well, how do you know this? And they said, well, the repulsive abomination came up out of the water and told us all about it. And like, repulsive abomination, what was that? Well, our God. The one who brought us our religion, all of our secret mysteries, the fish people that would come and tell us about it. Later, these fish people became known as Dagon. And you will find uh, Dagon as the fish people, Oans, and a number of other fish deities in the Bible. Uh, well, the Dogon were given a symbol by the fish people for the star Sirius. It just happened to be the, two the exact same symbol that I drew on Whoa. my space shuttle. Now, it was curious to me because what I had found was that the Masons worshipped Sirius. The Egyptians worshipped Sirius. The Mayans worshipped Sirius. Everybody's worshipping Sirius. Why? This was very strange. Now, just to give you an example, if you go downtown, or right across the street, you'll see the clock tower, right? And due, due north of the clock tower is the Capitol Dome, right? And standing on top of the Capitol Dome is a goddess holding a pentagram. You're all aware of this, right? Okay, so... The Egyptian hieroglyph for Sirius is an obelisk, a dome, and a pentagram. And guess who represents Sirius? But Isis. So that is the goddess standing there holding the pentagram. So we have a life-size uh, hieroglyph to Sirius as our capitals in every nation. 
and then, or every state, my bad. Uh, and, and then, standing in front of this clock tower across the street, you will find our goddess, Columbia, hanging out with the fish people. So they're the merfolk that are there pulling Columbia, our goddess, forth on a boat. And then on one side she has a pentagram, on another she has a shell. These are symbols of Lucifer, Venus.